Welcome back everyone to Stage Fiege here at the third edition of the Berlin e-commerce. We hope you have been enjoying your morning so far. I had, we had uh, great presentations here and I'm sure also our next speaker will provide ideas, knowledge uh, that he will share with you that we will find fascinating and inspiring. Um, please uh, make an applause our next speaker. He is a head of e-commerce for L'Oreal and he will tell us uh, how companies that don't have their own e-commerce store, like for example L'Oreal, how they can partner up with other people to do indirect e-commerce and I think he will be able to present it way better than I could ever do. Please make a warm applause for Luca Brecalo. Thank you. So as said, um, basically the context uh, which I will be presenting is that uh, we don't have our own e-commerce store online shop and that we work together with partners. And uh, what we like to show you is um, how to uh, proceed in such a partnership and kind of grow the category in an environment which is maybe a bit more complex than a pure beauty player because our products are exclusively distributed via e-pharmacies and so you can imagine like having an e-pharmacy beauty is not their main business but still it's a fast-growing category especially online and uh, I want to show you today what we achieved in the last few years and month so the goal is um, to really have a look at the category development at online pharmacies and uh, basically when you look at the market the market is growing very fast and is very much driven also by cosmetics, especially dermocosmetics. And um, so I'm in charge of the brand portfolio of uh, active cosmetics, the brands like Vichy, La Roche-Posay, CeraVe and Roger Gallet. And those brands were actually contributing throughout the last two years very much to the growth also of our partners. And when we talk about category, category creation, Obviously, it's a lot about look and feel. So what we deliver is inspirational content, great visuals, uh, great campaigns. But basically, that's just uh, the cherry on the cake. Because um, when you look here at this image, and you can see, obviously, it's far more complex. On the left side, you see maybe something what everybody thinks L'Oreal is presenting, um, where you have really a fast decision in the consumer journey, very impulsive, with a nice testimonial, nice trending color, and it goes very fast. But actually, when you think about dermocosmetics and professional skincare, the consumer journey is up to 20 days. And so you need completely to have another approach to this one. And what we did is a lot of consumer research together with our team internally, and we conducted a lot of studies offline and also e-shopper studies with German e-retailers. And actually, the, the path to purchase is super complex. And we want to show you how we cracked it. So basically, that's uh, when we started. Um, and when you have a look at the basic e-pharmacy uh, average, you will see the home page is very loud. And it's very fragmented. And the consumer is a bit overwhelmed. And so what we have been working on is really to optimize the consumer path, the consumer journey, and to really have a kind of different touch points throughout the 20 days where you can tackle um, and uh, recruit the person. So this is the ideal scenario. And obviously, this does not just happen on the homepage of the e-retailer, but it starts completely somewhere else. And this is actually uh, on Google or on YouTube or on other websites where people search. And uh, when they start to search, and you can see it's a double-digit growth in professional skincare is uh, growing very fast. They actually start at the very beginning and that's where you have to win the battle. So this is our uh, four-phase approach when it comes to this consumer journey, which takes up to 20 days. And where you have in the first stage uh, to, to really win this SEO battle against the competitors. And then in the second stage, deliver high-end content uh, address, address the skin concern, the indication which the consumer is uh, looking for. And in the next stage, and this is especially relevant because you have always, the consumer has a problem, so you have to deliver a solution. So you have to test and trial. You have to give him sampling. So you have to do product tests, which is very important in the consumer journey. So he gets a feeling for the product 
and for the solution. And in the end, we don't want to sell just one product, but we want to upsell the consumer, basically. When you have uh, a day cream, uh, you can also have a night cream, you can have a makeup, you can have a sun care. So it's really very important to increase the, ba uh, the, the basket and to, to really um, push the routine. So when we look at the first stage, basically consumers, they don't straight away um, search for Vichy, La Roche-Posay, mostly they go via their indication, the concern they have, the problem, which is in most of the cases acne, allergy, uh, atopical skin, and so on and so forth. So our marketing and digital teams are very much focused on those um, contents and on, this, uh, on the optimization of our products on those SEO relevant keywords. But we have to keep in mind that there is also a commercial search. So people tend to go more and more also on platforms and in our case it's e-pharmacies. So the first step also to build up the category is to ensure that the functional um, category works out. So basically that the on-site search um, also is um, kind of uh, optimized towards those concerns we have here. And uh, this is uh, just an example of one of our partners, Doc Morris. Um, Actually, when you, when you search for the indications, you will see, uh, when you search for acne, you will find our products and in a very nice uh, visually and content-wise uh, described way. When we have a look at the next stage, and this is another uh, strong partner of us, Shop Apotheke, which are, by the way, going international very fast. And uh, when you have a look at this, this is really important to understand that in the second stage, the consumer wants to have high-end content which uh, delivers against the needs. So basically, if they s have a problem with like a topical skincare, you first have to approach them in a generic way and to show them how to, to treat this uh, concern, how to improve tr tips and tricks, benefits, USPs. And in the end, when you lead him through this whole funnel, you have to show him al also like what kind of product progr products can solve his problems. So this is the second stage, but then we come to the third stage and what we also talked about is like the test and trial uh, period. Like people have to get in touch with the products and nowadays they also expect that it is for free and nowadays they're also more and more in like social environments like Facebook, Instagram and so on. So what we do a lot with our partners is product testing to increase reviews and ratings, um, to create buzz and to give them the opportunity to test and try our products. And this is actually working out very well because when we have a look later, also we have a newsletter program, a CRM program, and we retarget those persons, it works out very well. So the person who tested is much more um, kind of uh, likely to convert. And in the last stage, what, what we experience is really just imagine one person having acne um, he will not just need a uh, professional cleansing product, but then also day care, night care, but in the, in the case of a female person also makeup, or in the case of vacation or summer, also sun care. So what we try to do is, once we recruit one consumer, just to also have the opportunity to increase the basket, to upsell him, and to loyalize him also throughout the whole journey and um, customer lifetime cycle. So we have a nice example of another partner of uh, ours, which is Apodot, also online pharmacy from Germany. And what we did on Suncare was a really nice consumer journey where we uh, did a joint marketing case, um, both of us investing into Google and into Facebook ads and then leading him through, through this whole um, high-end content, which was uh, specialized on Suncare and really also we had a focus also on kids to make it relevant because if we recruit kids then also the parents are more likely to to use those products and uh, this was a very nice case where we managed to really boost our um, uh, sun care business in the last summer uh, tremendously and uh, then going forward um, we have um, also different projects in the pipeline uh, when we talk together with our e-retail partners and i mean most of them uh, sound very familiar, I guess, to you. But uh, for us, um, in this stage, um, with our e-commerce partners and relationships, we really have to emphasize those because so far they haven't been um, leveraged all on this, uh, on this way. And we want to really get more targeted to even increase the consumer journey and the experience. 
So profiling is a big thing, conversational commerce, there is a lot of consultancy need for those, let's call them patients or consumers. So we are also very much working on the consultation, on the service, on the service hotlines, on the live chats, but then also on, um, on, the, uh, on the bots because we have to somehow scale the business. And there we are also working together with uh, a lot of nice uh, partners in our environment, like for example, Baku, who are now partnering up uh, with a, a lot of e-retailers from our network. Uh, but then there are also other partners like Bazaar Voice and so on, which are specialized in different kind of topics and, and themes. So basically from our side, that's it. And I would like to open up the discussion uh, for, for questions. Well, thank you very much, Luca, for um, sharing your knowledge with us. So who wants to ask the first question? I'm sure there are people who I... Yes, thank you very much. So please stand up and speak loud. Do you ever try for cross-selling techniques with non-skincare items, like clothing or anything? Uh, do you ever try to go for cross-selling techniques with non-skincare items, like clothing and things like that? Thank you very much. You got it, yeah? So, so basically, it's a really great question you're asking. So this is one of our biggest potentials. Like when you look at the traffic and at the consumers and all those e-pharmacies, you see there is a really high search for like um, uh, pharmaceutical or medicine products. And what we do is that when you have like a medicine or like a product which is uh, delivered against this indication, that we cross our skincare products as well. So this is one of the huge levers. I did not mention it. It goes more into detail, but it's, let's say, a recruitment machine. Yeah. Was it? Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, hi, thank you for your presentation. One question. Uh, which marketing channels bring you the biggest return on investment? Uh, excuse me. So, uh, which advertising channels bring you the biggest return on investment? Understood. Yeah. Which channel? Yeah. So basically, um, obviously, it's Google. Uh, like uh, most of them, invest really into Google uh, search, SEA, and optimize their SEO portfolio and so on. Google Shopping performs really very well, uh, especially if you add like also samples and on packs to it. But another huge trigger is even, and it sounds a bit old school, but in Germany it's super important, TV. As soon as there is uh, TV commercials uh, with an online shop, the performance really increases um, straight away. And if you manage to synchronize this also with our efforts and also with the efforts of, of other, uh, let's say, cosmetics uh, players, then especially the beauty uh, care is um, increasing a lot. So I would say TV and uh, Google. Thank you. Anyone? Oh, here, yeah, sorry. Okay, I need to look a little bit further, yeah. So I'll run. Yeah, thank you very much. Hi. Um, did you try to connect the data from offline to online? Are you doing this currently? Did you try to connect the data from offline with online data? Do you recognize customers? If I understood it correctly, whether you are able to connect offline and online data? Yeah. Actually, offline, it's really a challenge, as you could imagine. So basically, what we do much more is uh, we gather, let's say, baskets or like also target group relevant data, and then we use it from an e-tail world to the offline world. So Rather, it's rather the vice versa, using data on, you, you get it online and then providing it to our internal marketing team who is also in charge of the brick and mortar stores and then providing him like also straight away on a weekly basis with data. So it wor works more the vice versa way, not from offline to online, but from online to offline. No more questions? Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, 
for what you presented, you need a lot of cooperations with the retailers, with the uh, online uh, pharmacies in your case. How do you make sure that cooperation works well for both partners? What is the key to getting these cooperations running? Thank you very much. So basically, I think also another great question because it shows that this is a win-win business. So both sides uh, want to participate of a fast and dynamic market and a growing category. And so I can say for our top partners, it works out very well because we provide them uh, with the necessary content, with the products. We do a lot of marketing also besides. So TV commercials, uh, digital campaigns, print where our e-retailers benefit a lot because also what we sometimes do is provide leads. So I think on both sides, uh, we offer really a lot of benefits. And um, also on the e-retailer side, they provide us with a lot of traffic, with like special landing pages. And uh, that's the way how we can actually also sell our products. So it's pure mutual. And I would say in most of the cases, it, uh, it works out very well. Yeah, thank you. Hi, Luca. Thank you very much for your presentation. Um, there's a lot of, of things happening right now. Yeah, there's a lot of things happening right now, and omnichannel is a word that is coming all over the place. Uh, I come from the UK. Uh, omnichannel is everywhere. So I wonder how omnichannel is actually playing a role, if it's right now happening in L'Oreal, and how are you managing to uh, better approach your customers, especially your prospect customers, and how do you transform that into that's those interactions, those conversations into potential uh, sales? So, so, so we completely agree. Um, oh. ah, to repeat the question, so the question was, um, uh, omnichannel is omnipresent, and so um, actually in the UK, status quo is that um, all the main retailers are already there. And in Germany, I have to say, we are picking up, but very fast. But in, uh, in our special case, it's a bit challenging because on the one hand, you have um, uh, 20,000 brick and mortar stores, uh, which are not allowed to own more than three stores. So there is uh, not a lot of scalability when it comes to the offline business. Whereas you have strong online players, which just have one official point of sale, but they are not pushing it. So unfortunately for our industry, there are not many players, or not at all, who can uh, basically, basically um, crack both channels. Whereas when I look into other division or business areas, L'Oreal is um, uh, in there, like the mass market, where, for example, uh, DM is picking up very fast with the online business and will offer now opportunities to really um, uh, uh, also uh, surf against the uh, omnichannel demands. So in this area, we're, work we're working very well, or also when it comes to the perfumery business, where Douglas is both a strong player offline and online, there it works very well, and it's um, um, keeping up the pace, I think, also like in the UK. Unfortunately for the pharmacy business, so far not. Please, loud and clearly. Hi. Um, is it important for you to use other channels, sales channels, like marketplaces like Amazon or eBay? Do you use them at all? Thank you. So basically, we're not uh, leveraging those channels so far because we have a selected distribution agreement across Europe, uh, meaning that uh, we are um, we have r really hard criteria which um, actually those marketplaces can't deliver against and that's uh, why we are not using it um, so far and uh, we don't have plans doing it because our business with the pharmacies is super profitable and the whole portfolio of L'Oreal is based like this that you have different divisions and each one is leveraging different channels so uh, for now there are no plans also to do this. Hi, thank you for the presentation. Uh, you mentioned that L'Oreal has a lot of divisions. We know that you guys have a lot of products. Uh, how are you managing the challenge that all of each division has different data? Are you somehow sharing them? And if so, how? You got it? Trusted, okay, thank you, yeah. 
So, so basically the question was, we have a lot of different business areas with different divisions working in different channels and how do we manage um, to basically um, bundle all this data and share uh, the learnings and uh, best practices and so on. So basically we have a project, um, a CRM project running internally which is uh, delivering against this um, insight and also potential. So um, we are building up a, a system where we can learn from each other and also we are conducting a lot of uh, shopper studies and also e-retail analysis which we share between each other. There is also a central tool and uh, we are getting there. We still have time for more questions, so please feel free to. Yeah, okay. On one slide, you, s or you just said that you take care of the content of your sellers in special cases. Um, how important is um, the content to you that your products are presented in the right way, in the best way? So uh, for us, the brands are the most important things. So our image is uh, super important and therefore we take a lot of care uh, on the presentation of our brands in the retail environment and with our partners. We also have agreements uh, that they have special criteria they have to meet against. Um, still, I would say it's a big challenge because um, I'm talking here about five, six, maybe up to 10 key partners, but the market is very fragmented. You have up to 25 different e-retailers and I can tell you it's, it's a pretty challenging uh, to deliver against all these demands. And also the market is still very manualized, so there is not much of automation happening and therefore we are trying to get also tools and, and ways of working to make it all more automatized and scalable to ensure that at each and every platform we can deliver against our criteria. Well, if there aren't any, is this a hand? No, this is just a, okay, yeah. So then um, I think we had a, a lot of uh, thoughtful <laughs> questions answered. Uh, thank you very much again for Luca Brigallo.